Well, hi everybody and welcome to the final video in this particular series and today I'm going to talk about diet and this will probably be the most controversial of any videos I've put together and all I'm going to say right up front is that I'm not advocating any particular diet. I'm just going to make some observations and tell you what my particular diet is, which I find is, is right for me. So, like I said, not advocating any particular diet, but I will be mentioning some of the more popular lifestyle diets. Um, and what I had to do with mine to adjust for life on the trail. And then I'll just go through some typical food choices just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that you might wanna deal with. So by diet, I don't mean capital D diet as in something you go on, for example, to lose weight or something like that. I'm speaking more of what is your dietary lifestyle? How do you eat in your normal everyday life? And there's a lot of choices. There's uh, you know vegan and vegetarian choices. Um, I don't happen to be a vegan, but I one thing I do admire about them is you'll never hear a vegan say, well, I'm a vegan, but on Saturdays I have a cheap day and eat a steak. Um, vegans, for the most part, the ones I've known, are very serious about it, and they really pay close attention to their food choices. So in that sense, uh, being a vegan is actually a, a probably you know a good thing for, for a lot of people. Uh, then there is a carnivore diet, opposite of vegan, obviously. Um, low carbohydrate, high fat diets, and in one particular form of that is you know all the rage now. It's the keto diet. Um, I follow. I'll, I'll start by calling it a low carb, high fat diet. Um, I really don't care if I'm in ketosis or not. Um, just not something I, I really pay attention to. Um, but. I found for, for reasons I'm not going to get into in this video, that's the diet that works best for me. So those three are, you know, your low carb diets. Um, then there is the standard American diet, which is basically, yeah, just eat what's available. There is a low fat diet. Some people go on a low fat diet thinking that it's going to, uh, you know, uh, 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 promote heart health. And then there's... Uh, obesogenic rat chow, which is from the macronutrient point of view, very similar to the standard American diet. And then there's specialty diets like the Mediterranean diet and so on. Well, these, these three that I have with a bracket up there, standard American diet, low fat and obesogenic rat chow, those are basically high carb diets. Um, if you don't consider yourself to be on a particular diet, you're probably on the standard American diet. Um, Personally, I know a lot of low carbers and, and a lot of them do have cheat days and I wish uh, we could all take the lesson from the vegans and just not have cheat days and that's just like that's just defeating the, the purpose of following a, a particular diet and um, I'll get into uh, low carb on, on maybe a different YouTube channel that I was thinking of starting where I'll, I'll treat things a little more in-depth and a little more seriously so Okay, that could be your diet. Any of these could be your diet. Mine happens to be low carb, high fat again. Um, but when I'm on a trail, um, I find that, uh, you know, these special or restrictive diets, I don't like thinking of low carb, high fat as a restrictive diet so much because there's so many food choices in the world um, that in my everyday life, I have no problem following it. Um, but out on a trail, it actually is a bit of a problem. And it's got to be a problem, even if you're a vegan or, you know, what, if you are following like the Mediterranean diet or something like that. Um, yet I do see vegans doing it successfully. I mean, I have run into several vegans out on the trail and they have, uh, you know, with, with careful planning, they have no problem, you know, keeping up that particular diet. Um, but I found that with the low carb approach, at least for me, at least from what I've learned and been able to do so far, the logistics makes it tough. The availability of standard trail food, um, it's all high carb stuff. Um, and the availability of real good choices that are going to keep while you're on the trail uh, in the high fat, uh, low carb world are, you'll have to do a, a bit of thinking to ensure that you, you can do that. And I just haven't successfully done it yet. Right? And I'm gonna get to that in the, in the final slide. Um, there are physiological differences between being on the trail and being in your normal at home life. I mean, when I'm normal at home life means I'm, you know, I'm exercising one hour a day 
on my elliptical trainer, sometimes only a half an hour. And, uh, you know, I've got an office job when I choose to work. Um, I go into the office and I can, you know, do my work there. Um, when I'm out on a trail, I'm burning twice as many calories. I mean, metabolically, it's, it's totally different. So these are just reasons why currently I eat different on a trail than I, than I do at home. Um, like I said, vegans seem to manage it. The low carbers that I talked to, when there are a lot of them on the trail, most of them admitted that, like me, they just couldn't manage it. I mean, you know, even if you can make the food choices, their bodies wouldn't allow them to manage it. Um, this, this, this difference in metabolism and all the, the extra work you're putting in, hiking eight to 12 hours a day, just made it difficult for them. Though I did meet one older gentleman who, and this was in Maine, and he was a northbounder who, so that meant he had gone about at that point close to 2,000 miles, not quite 2,000 miles, and, and he told me he maintained the state of ketosis um, the whole way. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, you know, at least uh, I'm pretty sure, I have no reason to doubt that at least his food choices were low carb, high fat food choices. And, you know, of course, a high carb diet really is the default. And I admit when I was out on the trail, um, I just didn't really pay attention anymore. I just paid attention. I had to eat. Um, when food was available, I ate it. Um, when I go to restaurants, if I stopped at a trail town, yeah, then I would be a little more careful about what I ordered at the restaurant. But, you know, out on the trail, I was being a little selective about my uh, trail bars and that sort of stuff. Uh, but... Um, it's, it's unfortunately some of the stuff that says keto friendly on it, for example, is just junk and chemicals. That's just a marketing term for we're willing to take your money if you're foolish enough to pay it. Um, so I would stay away from those chemical laden keto friendly things. I mean, I guess there are some things that say it's keto friendly, and you know, if it's a steak, <laughs> you know, okay, it's keto friendly. If it's an egg, it's keto friendly. But uh, if it's something packaged and it's got a whole bunch of things on the ingredient list that you can't pronounce, then yeah, maybe technically it's keto friendly, but it's it's junk. Um, so, like I said, high carb is the default. So the standard trail fare that you can get, you know, are trail bars, trail wicks, uh, trail mix, candy, uh, jerkies, meat jerkies. Um, I try staying away from the candy even on the trail. Occasionally uh, as a treat, I'll take a little that I'll eat throughout the day. Um, I figure at least my muscles are burning the carbs as soon as they hit my system. Um, and of course there's peanut butter and tuna packets and, and the, the advantage to the peanut butter, it is a high fat food. Tuna packets are actually um, almost all protein. Um, you might go for soft tacos and you might go for the low carb soft tacos, but um, I would suggest, by the way, don't bring bread. Um, it gets moldy, and don't think you can cut around the mold. And once bread is showing mold, that mold is has permeated the entire loaf. You can't get you can't get around it, and you'll just get sick. So toss it out. Um, and then of course, you can get like smoked cheeses, anything that doesn't need refrigeration, and, and, and cheese is good for that sort of stuff. And there's prepackaged commercial items. Like, you know, potato mixes, instant potato mix, uh, instant rice mixes, uh, pasta mixes, and even something like Spam, which, you know, unfortunately comes in a metal can that you have to carry in and carry out. Plus, it's very heavy because, you know, it's water content and all of that. But if you're out of town and you want to treat yourself, you know, just make sure it's the first thing you eat, you know, when you get back on the trail. It's going to be one of your first meals to, to get rid of that weight. And then there are commercial prepackaged meals. You will go broke if you try feeding yourself with these the whole way, but um, you know they're they're available. There's Mountain House, uh, which is a traditional kind of high carb. Though there are vegan options available with both Mountain House and Backpackers Pantry. I've seen you know hey it's vegan. So if you're looking for vegan or you know you don't care about the carbs or you'd rather have high carb, Mountain House and Backpackers Pantry are viable. Um, for low carb options, um, there is one company I found that does produce uh, low carb meals, uh, prepackaged meals uh, called Next Mile Meals. Um, you know, they of course have to advertise, hey, it's tasty and everything. And in my opinion of it was, man, it, was, it wasn't bad, you know, but it didn't knock me, uh, you know, off my feet. 
Um, I I can I can eat them and enjoy them, but um, you know don't don't expect to be overwhelmed with oh this just tastes great. I mean it's just it's a it's a prepackaged meal. So here's the bottom line. Um, unlike in my daily life where I have no cheat days, at least not intentionally, you know, I'm willing to adjust to meet my short-term hiking needs while I'm on the trail. I, I think of my diet now as not low carb per se, but appropriate carbs. And in my daily life, appropriate carbs is low carb, like maybe 10% of my calories from carbs. And that's only because it's impossible to eat healthy without hitting a little bit of carbs um, through a consumption of vegetables. Um, you know, vegetables have carbohydrates in them, but you know, they have enough fiber, which is also a carbohydrate technically. But the, the carbs I'm avoiding are sugars and starches. Both of them um, cause an insulin reaction, and I'll get into that on some other channel someday. So, I am always looking for ways to evolve towards my normal dietary lifestyle while I'm on the trail. I just couldn't manage it. I did go on a few practice hikes where I did try, and I found that in my current state, um, I was running out of energy early in the afternoon. Um, so I just realized, hey, my, my body is not ready for low carb on the trail, though like that gentleman I ran into, like I said, he was an older guy in Maine. Um, he did manage it and I have no reason not to um, believe him. Bottom line is it takes practice and planning. Uh, just getting your eating down uh, in general out on the trail, uh, carrying enough, realizing that you have to carry um, you know, thousands of calories a day. And even if you're, you know, of the mindset, well, it's not calories, your body doesn't recognize calories per se. Uh, when it comes down to it, you, you do have to have enough uh, energy content. And we, as a shorthand, use calories to say what the energy content is. And, uh, you know, you will be burning 4,000 to 5,000 calories a day. So that means eating a lot of food. And even at best, that's one and a half to two and a half pounds of food, even if it's dehydrated, in order to get that energy content. So, you know, think about it. If you're going to be out for five days, that's seven and a half pounds of food at least. And, uh, you know, maybe 10 or 12 pounds of food that you're going to have to carry with you um, for that stretch of trail. So that's everybody. Uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening.